That was almost the perfect golf swing. Someone that strives for perfection, I don't know what to do after that shot. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today we are going to be discussing how club speed influences a lot of factors when you are hitting your driver. So for today, I'm going to hit several shots with different club speeds ranging from about 80 miles an hour up to my absolute max speed. We're going to collect data from 80 to 90 to 100, 110, and then we'll see what kind of speed that I can generate at the end here to really take a look and see how speed with your driver golf swing, how, how it can influence how far the ball goes, how far offline it may go, how much how much the ball spins, how high the ball flies, and just a whole bunch of factors that really are important to pay attention to in a club fitting and also to pay attention to when you're out on the golf course too. So let's hit a whole bunch of drivers with different club speeds and then we'll take a look at the data. This is good practice for my tempo. <laughs> Slow my transition down. Start hitting it straight. That was almost the perfect golf swing. Got to take a minute to take a look at those numbers. Pretty good. Look at this, look at this club path. 0.0, .0 face to path, 0.0, .0 face angle negative 0.1 and curve. Someone that strives for perfection, I don't know what to do after that shot. Okay, 25 swings with quite the range in club speed, club speed ranging from 80 miles an hour all the way up to 115 miles an hour with the Callaway Maverick driver. Just want to touch on the specs for this driver. We hit the exact same driver the entire way through. So this is the Callaway Maverick, 9 degrees. I had it in the stated neutral position on, on the hosel there as well. And I have just the Odilla Rogue 60S golf shaft. I kept it the same golf shaft all the way through while I was hitting. Now, I want to touch on that because as we go through, through these numbers, we're really going to talk about the differences in club speed and why we may need more loft on a driver, may, why we may need a different golf shaft with regards to flex. Um, it's going to be really kind of interesting. We'll notice when I started to swing faster, some numbers started to change and everyone swings differently. So it's really important to make sure you work with a club fitter to work on your swing tendencies, no matter what speed that you swing at, because there's a wide range of different drivers out there on the market. Nine degrees worked well at, for one of the club speeds that I had, but we started to see some differences where I would have needed more loft on the driver or even less loft on the driver. So that's important to make sure you pay attention to. Make sure that you get fit for the right loft on the driver that you are hitting and also the right golf shaft. Okay, so let's talk numbers. So first thing we will notice here is pretty good with regards to the categorization. We'll see that my club speed at 80 miles an hour, I had five swings on average at 80.3, 90, 90.1, 100, was just a little over, 101.2, 110, right on, smack on the number right there. And then my max speed, average speed for the five swings was right about 115 miles an hour. Starting to pick up a little bit of speed. So I definitely put that down to the, the super speed training protocols that I've been going through here too. So it's kind of exciting to see a little bit more club speed to be generated. Unfortunately, I couldn't put uh, the category of 120 miles an hour up here today. Maybe in the future, we'll, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we can get that club speed up a little bit faster. But let's take a look at the numbers. So first thing, if we look at ball speed, we'll see that the lowest amount of ball speed was associated with the lowest amount of club speed. And that's going to be the exact same. It's going to go all the way through the same trajectory. The lower the amount of club, club speed, the lower the amount of ball speed I generated, the higher the club speed, the more ball speed that I generated. Now we're talking from a range from 80 miles an hour of club speed to 114. We're talking a range of 50 miles an hour of ball speed differences across the board with all the different swing speeds that I generated. 
Really kind of interesting. My, now my efficiency was very, very good with all the drivers that we hit. We're talking 1.50 to 1.48. Really kind of interesting how the slowest club speed generated the highest efficiency rating there too. So that is important to note because you don't have to swing out of your shoes all the time to hit the ball far. Because in the day, we want to hit it in the middle of the club face. If you have a smoother golf swing, you may just find the middle of the club face. And that's kind of what we noticed there today. My highest efficiency was with my 80 mile an hour swing. Um, my lowest efficiency was, my, with, was with my 110 mile an hour swing. And that actually gave me the widest kind of dispersion there across the board. Um, launch angle. So launch angle, you'll notice the higher the launch angle, the higher the club speed. So at my max speed and at my 110 mile an hour drivers, my launch angle was at 15 degrees with both those swing types. I have nine degrees on the driver. My attack angle normally is up four or five degrees with a driver. So we're getting towards the, the top end with regards to optimal launch angle there. When I start swinging really fast, I'm going to touch on that real quickly now with my max speed, my attack angle got quite up. So my attack angle went to 5.6 degrees up. If I was going to swing at that speed, I could get away with a little less loft on the club because I was starting to spin the ball a lot. So the spin rate was getting closer to 2600. So I wasn't quite maximizing how far I possibly could hit the ball with my max speed today because I need to make a couple of adjustments. Would that be the golf shaft or would that be the loft on the driver? Um, so we can kind of see at the other end of the spectrum, my 90 mile an hour, my 80 mile an hour, and my 100 mile an hour swings, they were ranged from 12.6 to 12.5 degrees of launch angle to 13.5. So the slower the swing, the lower the launch angle, the faster the swing, the higher the launch angle. When you saw, we saw that also when we did this with irons as well. Let's see if we see the same trend with spin rate. So if we look here, this shows, you know, the spin rate with my 80, 90, and 100 mile an hour swings definitely was on the low side. Definitely needed a little more loft to get the ball up in the air to maximize kind of the distance. So we'll see with my 80 mile an hour swing and my 90 mile an hour swing, the spin rate was hovering around about 1600 RPMs. And it was consistently spinning very low. We're talking plus or minus numbers that were very, very consistent. So consistently less spin with not much speed. Started to see that spin rate to go up a little bit, 100 miles an hour. Then we started seeing, getting more in that optimal spin rate that I kind of like to see, 2050 at 110 miles an hour. And then we started seeing that spin rate get a little too high. So the spin rate at 2600 with my max speed was, you know, if I want to hit the ball a little further, I could get that spin rate down and generate a few more yards of roll out there too. But Carry distance, total distance, we'll see the same trends across the board. You'll notice at 80 miles an hour, I was only carrying the ball 168 yards in the air, going 211. My max speed, I was carrying the ball 298 yards, going 315 yards total. That's 130 yards of carry distance by generating club speed ranging going up about 35 miles an hour. So that's a huge, huge difference right there across the board when I swing at 80 miles an hour. And we see that trend start to really kind of go up. We're talking about 40 yard differences across the board from 80 to 90 to 100 miles an hour to 110 miles an hour. So coming back to the super speed training protocol, if you are able to pick up 10 miles an hour more club speed, you may pick up 40 more yards carry distance. That's, that's huge. So that's definitely kind of a big kind of takeaway there. As we're seeing this, this trend. That's quite the big difference. And we're going to see that with players that start with the slower speeds and start going up to the faster speeds. We'll notice here when I start going from 110 to 115 miles an hour, I only, started pick, I only picked up about 13 yards of carry distance there in a five mile an hour increase. So Club speed is definitely very, very important to generate a little bit more distance. I did touch on attack angle. So attack angle, we'll notice that I was hitting up on the ball about 
three degrees when I was swinging between 80 miles an hour and 100 miles an hour. And then we start to see it start to increase. At 110 miles an hour, it was almost five. And then 5.6 degrees up with my max speed. If I'm going to swing like that on the golf course, I'm going to need to make some changes to my golf equipment to really kind of maximize the potential distance that I can really hit. And that's why you see a lot of those, uh, those long drive competitors with less loft on their drivers, with longer golf shafts, less loft, um, really to kind of optimize the distance that they can hit it. So it might be fun to try and build myself a driver that would possibly generate even more distance with maybe a little longer golf shaft and a lot less loft to really kind of see what kind of distance I can really kind of hit it across the board there too. Uh, I want to touch on height because height is very, very important. Um, we can see when I was only swinging at, at 80 miles an hour, I was only hitting that driver 40 feet in the air. When I was swinging at 115 miles an hour, my max speed, it was 146 feet in the air. So that's, that's a huge, huge difference. And we start to see that big jump, jump there between 100 and 110 miles an hour. And that's a little bit to do with my, my attack angle when I start hitting up on a little bit more. But that's a huge difference. If you're only hitting it 40 feet in the air, you're sacrificing a lot of carry distance. Better hope that those fairways are really nice and firm out there, otherwise you're definitely sacrificing distance across the board. Um, looking at curve, we can see how when I was swinging my fastest, kind of interesting. On average, I had the least amount of curve on the golf ball. Now every other club speed range, I had more curve to the left. But it's kind of interesting, on average, with my fastest speed, the ball was flying the straightest overall on average. But you've got to pay attention to that consistency. Notice that consistency number there, plus or minus 38, pretty inconsistent. So more speed is going to generate more curve, left or right. We were just noticing that, on average, it was only at one. But that's because I had some that were pretty far left and some that were pretty far to the right across the board there, too. So, so this is really kind of interesting data. Last factor I want to kind of touch on is this dispersion pattern. And see this total distance here. First thing I want to touch on is how similar my distance was at 110 miles an hour, and then I was able to get just five miles an hour more club speed. Kind of going about the same distance. You're going to see with regards to numbers there too. So sometimes swinging out of your shoes isn't all it isn't all the whole story. We want to, end of the day, hit the middle of the club face, and we want to still hit the, keep the ball in the fairway there as well. One thing that really, really surprised me is that 90 mile an hour range, that green circle. Now I know if I want to hit a shot 250 yards, I could probably just hit my nice little smooth driver and smooth it down the fairway and leave myself a nice little wedge into a, a, a short par or something like that there too. So that's kind of interesting how a very, very smooth golf swing generated a little bit more kind of consistency at that 90 mile, mile an hour mark there too. So kind of really interesting data. Uh, this is all the data that I would expect across the board. I just really want to make sure that you guys were educated and understand what club speed will provide you in return. So it will provide you more distance. But will it provide you more accuracy? Will it make it easier to get the ball up in there? It probably will. Now keep in mind it is definitely kind of player dependent. Keep in mind my golf swing, I do hit up on the ball. With my attack angle being up, I was able to maximize my distance with my strong attack angle. If my attack angle was down, then we'll start seeing some kind of issues, especially when we are testing with the nine degree driver. If we'll notice when I was only hitting the ball 40 feet in the air with my 80 mile an hour club speed, that's why players with less speed need to have more loft on their driver. So nine degree drivers for someone that swings only at 80 miles an hour, we probably want to leave go in that 10.5 to 12 degree range to really kind of pop that carry distance up for that player, especially if they're not going to swing too much faster there too. So important to get fit for your club speed. It's important to get fit for your, your loft, your launch angle on the driver and the amount of spin that you generate. More loft on the driver is going to generate a higher launch and more spin. And we noticed that my numbers were definitely not optimal when I was only swinging at the slower speeds. So really kind of interesting data. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We've got plenty more rather great content coming your way in the future. Do remind you again, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.